All right, hello guys. How's it going in today's video? We need to talk about Tropical Storm Ida, which is now developed and is expected to become Hurricane Ida, and then eventually, possibly, Major Hurricane Ida before striking the Gulf Coast. <laughs> Now, before we get into the video, I would ask that you smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I would also like to remind you guys that just a few days ago, we uploaded our third winter forecast, and a lot of people have been loving that one. I would like to recommend that you check that one out as well. If you haven't caught that one yet, that's going to be on the top right corner of your screen. You also see those question marks on screen. We're going to reveal what's underneath those question marks at the end of that video. So if you check that out, you can figure out what that is. And also we're going to be revealing that precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, and that snowfall forecast also within that video. For today's comment of the day, I want to know what category do you think this storm will end up being at its peak? Let me know in the comments down below and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's finally get straight into this video. And first things first, we're taking a look here at the five day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we have Tropical Storm Ida, as I said before. We also have our code red down there in the southern North Atlantic. And then kind of in the central North Atlantic, we have kind of a more moderate chance, which is weird because these are the opposites of what they were. Uh, the top one was red, the bottom one was yellow in our last update, I believe. And now the bottom one is red, the top one is orange. So we've kind of flipped here. Starting with that red one, which we've been tracking for about a week now, this one has an 80% chance of development now, but it is heading directly northward towards basically no land. So this one is basically a non-event. Uh, same story with this northern one. It's going to probably fizzle out if it does develop there in the very far north Atlantic. Uh, so that is also good news up there. They might add named storms to the list of named storms, which some people keep track of that and actually care. Uh, but really, I'm more just about tracking the weather that's going to impact people. Uh, but it, that is pretty interesting that those could kind of buff up the numbers, although they, again, really not going to lead or, or result in anything, uh, which is very, very good news. Now, here is that cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center for Tropical Storm Ida. And as you can see, this one is expected to remain a tropical storm through the night tonight. And even, yeah, so through the night tonight, but by about 2 p.m. tomorrow on Saturday, that's going to be August 28th. They're expecting it to be a hurricane by that point. And then by the time we're reaching 2 p.m. on Sunday, this one should be a major hurricane. I have it about a 50-50 shot at becoming a major hurricane, maybe a 60-40, I would say maximum. So it's not super like guaranteed odds, but the odds are pretty good at this point of that happening. We do have hurricane watches up for the entire coast of Louisiana and then the entire coast of Mississippi and a bit of the coast of Alabama as well where those impacts are possible for all of those regions. And then it's going to kind of head in inland there towards Mississippi, possibly Arkansas, possibly Alabama, but it's going to curve towards the east after that point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at satellite imagery. We're going to take a look at the spaghetti model guidance, the intensity guidance, and then we're even going to take a look at the individual models and what their maximum wind is for this one. And then also the total rainfall, storm surge, and the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds. All of those things are coming up in just a moment. Now here we are taking a look at some of that satellite imagery here from Ida. And as you can see, this is a storm that looks pretty intense right now as it's heading towards Cuba. I do expect this one to kind of regress a little bit. Take It's kind of taken two steps forward. It is going to take one step back here as it crosses over Cuba. That land interaction is going to eat it up a little bit, but it's more about how it recovers afterwards as it heads into the Gulf. We should see this one really rebound and really begin to intensify far beyond what it was before hitting Cuba. Right now, actually, we have a pretty nice split there, as you can see, in between uh, the two darker red and black areas there. There's kind of this green showing up, which is indicating shorter clouds. Usually, this is a intensifying storm. I look for that kind of a characteristic in there. But again, Cuba is going to eat it up pretty good. So we're going to have to just see what happens afterwards. Here's actually the low pressure location. And that low pressure center is on the very southern side of these clouds as we speak. Um, but this has moved further north since then, so I don't know for sure, but it does look like probably the low pressure location is on the more southern side of these uh, taller clouds there that we've been taking a look at. Let's just go right ahead and move on to the spaghetti model guidance. Here's our GFS ensemble model, and this is a very concerning outlook because if you look at the right-hand side of your screen, those reds and oranges there 
are the, the lower pressures, so the, the stronger storms there, and then the blues are the weaker storms. As you can see, a majority here are in the oranges, and then I would say about maybe a, a fourth here are in the reds, and those are storms that are in the 950s or 940s. Let me tell you, that is a strong hurricane, if that is the case. Even a lot of these oranges that are in the 960s and 970s, that is a stronger storm for sure. And then the 980s, they're in the blues. Those are going to be your more weaker side hurricanes for sure. Let's pay attention to the track though. And as you can see, there is a couple that show a Texas impact. We're going to watch those obviously, but that's just not the most likely outcome at this point. We also see a couple Mississippi impacts, but a vast majority there is in Louisiana. That's why our cone on the thumbnail is so wide because there is possibilities that are well well outside of the National Hurricane Center cone. And I usually like to go with all the possibilities within my cone. So that is why it does include every single possibility. Once the, once the models narrow down and the possibilities narrow down, I will also go ahead and narrow down my cone. I just want you guys to know every single possibility so nobody gets caught off guard. That's kind of like my, my motto around here. And what we're gonna do in a moment is we're gonna move on and we're gonna take a look at the European spaghetti model we're going to take a look at the CMC, which is our Canadian uh, spaghetti model, and then all of the models. And then we're going to take a look at the intensity guidance and, again, the wind on the models and even the impacts that we can expect from this storm. All right, now here we are taking a look at the European spaghetti model. It's the same thing here. Again, that very wide variety of possible, uh, the possible tracks here. We see central Texas coast possibility. A majority still in Louisiana. We do see a, a large cluster there actually in that area in between Louisiana and Texas though where a lot of northern Texas coast would be impacted. But the mean average is that black line and you can see that that's more for central Louisiana. The interesting thing here is that this mean average track is very close to the GFS mean average track there that we just saw a second ago. And then also the intensity guidance, if you look to the right side of your screen once more, is also very similar. We have a handful of those models going into the 950s and the 940s, a majority there in the 950s and 60s, even 70s as well. And then we have another handful there in the 980s. So yes, this is a very similar outlook. It's kind of very concerning to actually see this agreement here because that usually means that they're onto something. Uh, so we usually watch for that as well. Let's take a look at the Canadian model, and this is the weaker of all the models. The mean average track is also very similar, showing a Texas all the way to an Alabama impact, but the mean average is still central Louisiana. So that is, again, another very similar track. But on this one, we see that a vast majority here are in the 980s and 990s as far as the track goes and the intensity goes, but we do have a handful of 970s as well at this point. Now, here is all the individual models, and as you can see, a vast majority here have that Louisiana impact. We have one showing a Florida Panhandle impact, which is obviously way outside of what any of the other models are calling for. That's what we call a classic outlier, and the chance of that happening is probably 1% or less at this point, but it is possible. Obviously, one model shows it, it's possible. That's my rule of thumb. If something's showing it, it is possible. Tropical Storm Ida model intensity guidance here, and as you can see, the hours are on the bottom, by the way, but we can see that this one is at kind of a lower tier tropical storm. By 24 hours from now, we should be talking about a storm that is probably in the stronger half of a tropical storm there, probably above 50 knots. Uh, and then by the time we're reaching about tomorrow afternoon, we should be in the category one status. Uh, we have a couple there that just show this one kind of hovering in that category one status. But as you can see, there's a large group of models that take this one straight towards category two. And then half of those actually take it towards category three status at this point. So yeah, I think it's about, I think there's a very good chance we see a category two at peak. I think there's also a very good chance we see a category three, four, or even five at uh, peak status as well. Here's our individual models, and we're looking at the wind speed by time we're taking a look at these storms just offshore and reaching onshore of Louisiana. And for our, our European model here, as you can see, the maximum wind within there is 98 miles per hour, which would be a Category 2. So that is what we would be looking at on this European model for central Louisiana, as you can see. The GFS model here has a Category 4 hurricane at 134 miles per hour here and obviously that's a much stronger storm there for more eastern Louisiana. Our Canadian model is at 99 miles per hour also for eastern Louisiana so again a cat two. So we have two cat twos here and then a four 
Uh, so the European or yeah, the European model and the Canadian model are the two weakest, and then our GFS is definitely the strongest. Let's quickly go over these impacts, and you can always, always, always find all of these maps on the National Hurricane Center's website. Uh, so that's going to be a good place to go for these. If you're anywhere in the lighter greens, one to two inches of rainfall. If you're anywhere in the darker greens, two to four inches of rainfall. The yellow is four to six inches of rainfall. The orange there is going to be six to 10 inches of rainfall. The red is going to be 10 to 15 inches of rainfall. And that little bit of purple there we see onshore of Louisiana right next to New Orleans. We see 15 to 20 inches of rainfall, which is obviously a massive concern for rainfall already. As far as our storm surge here, we see a lot of eastern Louisiana expected to be at about 7 to 11 feet, which is going to be a pretty large storm surge. Obviously, we have some uh, we have some 3 to 5 there. Uh, we have some 4 to 7 there surrounding regions, and then 2 to 4, even 3 to 5 there uh, in Mobile Bay. So we're taking a look at um, a multitude of different levels of storm surge, but 7 to 11 is obviously a pretty large amount of storm surge that could go up at this point over time. Uh, most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds for the coast is going to be Sunday, 8 a.m. there, morning hours. I hope to go live for this one, uh, so that, that is going to be something I'm, I'm working towards trying to do, going live for that landfall. Probably I'll just have to wake up a little bit earlier, make my video on Sunday, uh, and then be prepared to go live at around maybe 8 a.m. or so. It just depends when the landfall happens, so be on the lookout for that. I will be trying to go live uh, at some point on Sunday whenever this landfall is occurring. Uh, and then those those tropical storm force winds will be reaching inland by about Sunday at 8 p.m. The probabilities are also on the screen. If you're anywhere in the greens, it's 5 to 30 percent chance of tropical storm force winds, 30 to 70 there in the yellows and oranges, and then in the reds and purples, we have a 70 to 100 percent chance of those tropical storm force winds. For today's confidence tab, we're at a 5 out of 6. We've gone up one level because we've reached closer with this storm. The track has narrowed a bit, and the impacts have become a little bit more clear. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, um, what category do you think this one will become? I asked you guys that again today because I just, we're one day closer. I wanted to see if you guys have any difference in opinion. But Brandon Dunn summed it up nicely. This storm could potentially become a major hurricane in the Gulf before landfall. Anywhere from a Category 3 to Cap 5 is possible. And I certainly agree. Usually within the Gulf, the possibilities are endless as far as intensity because of how warm those waters are. So we're just going to, we're going to prepare for the worst, which is a major hurricane of some degree. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Tennant, Cindy Klein, Mark J. Luke Flago, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Cronenthal. If you would like to be part of this exciting patron screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.